Got a redox titration question here, which includes some practical skills questions. So the first thing I'll do is show you the question. So here's the first slide of information. There's the next slide, and you can see the questions. first question starts at the bottom there. And there's the rest of the question there. So if you want to have a go at that, obviously you're going to need to rewind and have a look at the information on the first couple of slides. And then when you're ready for the answer, play on and I'll go through it. So part one, we're going to complete the table and then calculate the mean tighter that the student should use for analysing the results. So obviously the tighter is the difference between the initial and final Burette readings. But please remember to record it to the nearest 0 0.05 cm cubed. So that's what you would need to write in the titra row. And then in terms of the main titra, you never use the trial and you're looking for results that are concordant. So they've got to be within 0 0.1 cm cubed of each other. So therefore that rules out number two. And so we can only use one and three and so the mean of those is 21.75 cm cubed. So the next part of the question, the percentage uncertainty in titration three to two decimal places. So we need to remember that a titra is based on two Burette readings, so we have to double the error. So we get 0 0.1 over the titra for titration three times 100, 0.46%. In step two, y is excess of ki added, and you just need to say something along the lines of, to make sure all of the copper two plus is converted to copper one plus, or you could say to make sure all of the iodine is made for the titration. Next part, state the solution and explain the color change observed at the end point. So the solution that's added is starch indicator. Basically, as you're doing a thiosulfate iodine titration, the iodine gets reacted away and it becomes less and less brown, sort of paler and paler. Eventually it would go yellow to colourless, but it's very difficult to see the um, end point. So if you add starch, when there's a little bit of iodine still left in, so it's like a pale yellow colour, it goes blue-black, and when all the iodine's gone, it will go colourless. So the colour change for the second mark is blue-black to colourless, and that happens when all of the iodine has reacted. So you need to say both of those things for the second mark. So moving on to the calculation now, we've got to determine the formula for compound A. So essentially you've got to work out the XH2O part and show all our working. I always encourage my students to draw a little diagram of what's happening. So basically... 5.6 grams of A is dissolved into 250 cm cubed of water. That value, by the way, was obtained from the two mass readings. So what's happening there is the copper sulfate XH2O solid is being put into water and it's generating aqueous copper 2 plus ions. So they're in there. 25 cm cubed of that is then put into the conical flask. An excess of Ki is added and that Ki, the I minus ions, are turned into iodine. And the titration detects how much iodine was in the flask. So a reminder of the equations. And so the first thing we can do is work out the moles of thiosulfate that were used in the titration. And then the mole ratio in this equation will tell us how many moles of iodine are present. And remember the iodine in the titration is the iodine generated when the excess Ki was added. So that's half as many as the moles of thiosulfate. And then you can see from the mole ratio in this equation, we're going to double it back up again and go back to 2.61 times 10 to the minus 3. So that's the moles of copper 2 plus in here. We want to know how many moles of copper 2 plus were in there. So we multiply by 10, because that's 10 times 250 compared to 25. So it's just 2.61 times 10 to the minus 2. So that means the moles of CuSO4 XH2O must also be that. Now we know the moles, we know the mass, we can work out its MR. So that comes out at 
we know its formula or part of its formula. So if we subtract off what we know, so in other words, subtract away the CuSO4 part, we get the XH2O has a mass of 55. And if we just divide that by 18, the MR of water, we get X equals 3. So the formula of A is CuSO4.3H2O.